Brett, Hello. how are you? Hello, Tom. <laughs> Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. I hope you had a great day today. It was super fantastic. Yeah? Not going to complain. Well, uh, I had a good day, all in all. However, people have been a little bit more on the nutty side. Wait, people are crazy? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> myself included. Right. Um, but you brought up an interesting thing the other day, is that merch... Gurry is in retrograde. If you believe in the, that kind of thing, and the horoscope and how things evolve and move through the the uh, the night sky, <laughs> then yes, Mercury is in retrograde, which means I don't know that much about it. Uh, it's from the f April first to the twenty fifth. So we it. have. Uh, it's from the f April first to the twenty fifth. That's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> um, so about three and a half weeks. Uh, it's when things are going to go a little sideways. And yeah. it's a good time for miscommunications, for technology to go a little bit sideways, for things to just not go as smoothly as they usually do. Like, shit's just not working the way we want it to. It's, shit is just supposed to work. I decided, fuck it, we'll just curse on this, and whatever happens, happens. So I'm <laughs> so have a good time. Good. But yes, so Mercury's in retrograde, uh, and it started on the first. I had, I had people falling apart all around me. Yeah. And uh, not just with clients, though. Like yeah, family like too. Just in general. So, so just uh, and we have this uh, solar eclipse coming up on Monday, the mm -hmm. eighth. So that always makes things a little bit wacky. If. Um, People that work in the medical field, particularly that people who work around emergency rooms, they have a, usually a busier time during full moons and high tides, king tides, those kinds of things. Right. And, and solar eclipse is the same thing. So it's just a weird time. Right. The environment definitely plays a role in our mental and emotional health and well-being, doesn't it? For sure. Absolutely. And we have, what would they say, half of the country is under, under some weather alert today. Mm -hmm. There's snowing, like from Wisconsin over to uh, northern Ohio mm -hmm. up that way. There's rains in the northeast. Uh, we have a big rain band coming through here. And in fact, in about a, an hour, we're supposed to, it's been windy all day, mm -hmm. uh, but we're supposed to get some storms come through later. So Even physical health, too. I mean, there's times when the pressure drops and, like, I feel myself getting a headache or if it's about to rain or something like mm -hmm. there's a lot of merit to your environment and thinking about how it potentially is affecting you that it's not just what is going on between your ears that is the problem right there's lots of environmental factors we have yeah. we're going to have this very contentious uh, uh election this yeah. fall there's a lots of different uh, things on the agenda i know in florida um, the Supreme Court Monday or Tuesday um, approved to have legalized marijuana and some abortion legislation on mm -hmm. the ballot for November. So right. people in Florida have a lot to, to make decisions about. I know. Not, not in as much uh, that we have a political or a um, presidential election this fall. Yeah. Which is going to get interesting. It makes people crazy. <laughs> it sure does. So. So through this, there are always environmental uh, factors that influence, right? Other people influence the weather, um, politics, local and national, uh, and world politics. I mean, it was a horrendous story that we heard um, that those uh, kitchen aid workers, those volunteers that were helping feed uh, people in Gaza, where seven volunteers were killed. Yeah. Um, really horrible thing. Terrible. People that are going in to help solve a man-made famine, and uh, you know, were killed. So there's lots of things out there um, that can impact our, us, us, our moods, yeah. how, our our perspective, how we're seeing the world. So um, just stay the course. I mean, the whole uh, the whole concept is resiliency, man. Yes. Yeah. What do you got to do to hold yourself together to weather the storm? 
That's why I labeled this uh, session for today resilience. And I talk a lot about this in session with people building resilience, maintaining your resilience, which is, uh, I mean, in essence, simply put your ability to bounce back after an adversity, whether it's an adversity that happened to you or dealing with a challenging situation or just seeing like these horrendous um, traumatic things happening in our society or in our world and being able to, you know, kind of effectively deal with that and still be able to perform, still mm -hmm. be able to carry out your daily schedule, your plan of the day, your workload, manage your family, manage your own level of stress. Um, that's, that's resilience. So mm -hmm. it's not that we're not going to have adversity. Right. It's how equipped are you and how able are you to bounce back and recover? Right. And how do we build our resiliency? You know, there's some very easy things we can do um, to help build that. And so resiliency, as you said, just means our ability to weather the storms. Right. So so it's, it's like your house, the better the foundation, the better preparation that you've done the the better it is to weather the storm well how are how are you how is your foundation weathering the storm mm -hmm. you know we talk about in our top sand group the five basic things that aid at, and work on your foundation of re resiliency and it's good sleep hygiene uh, some decent nutrition um, hydration following a schedule and some exercise yeah. doing those five basic things mm -hmm. is the foundation of resiliency yeah and then you work up from there you know those are the ba th those are the, that's like breathing and eating you know that's those are the basis but then yeah. we work up from there something that can help you build resilience resiliency is finding a way even if it's just in a small amount or a small dose of a way to challenge yourself so um we are creatures of comfort. We engage in things that provide us a sense of comfort and safety. We do the same things over and over again. We go to the same uh, supermarkets. We go to the same gas stations. We go to the same lanes. We go to sleep at the same time. You know, like we do all these things uh, as creatures of comfort. And it's not in the comfort that changes us. It's in the challenges that we face, even if it's crafted by our own hand. If we can create a challenging situation then and have the ability to work through it, to adapt, then it fosters resilience. So if you're not challenging yourself right now, even in a small degree, mm -hmm. then you're not going to have a substantial amount of resiliency when something outside of you challenges you. Right. You know, it's something as basic as... You know you have that friend and you go out to eat with your friend and you go to your favorite restaurant and your friend orders the same dang thing every <laughs> single time. Yeah. You've never seen them not order the same thing. Well, what would happen if that thing came off the menu or they were out of those ingredients for the day? What? No chicken parmesan? What? What do I do now? <laughs> yeah. And it would cause great discomfort. You know, so uh, I love going to the restaurant, the same restaurant and ordering different things. I want to try everything on the menu. And, you know, some things are not my favorite, but every meal is not my last. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, just right. one meal. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, to get to your point about challenge yourself, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Um, knowledge does not come from success generally. It comes from failure. So don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. It's still a win, even if you fail. Right. Oh, that shrimp macaroon, man. I tried that off the menu and it was a failure. It was a failure. <laughs> Heavy failure. I won't order that again. Yeah. The uh, sushi that you got from uh, the gas station. Right. No, no bueno. <laughs> no, no bueno. No. When I was in the Marine Corps, we had this um, uh, this saying. Uh, well, it wasn't really saying, but it was, it was like this idea of having intestinal fortitude. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, there's different ways to say that. That was just the language we used. But it was like that gut check. It was the mental toughness. It was resilience. It was courage under fire. Mm -hmm. Being able to, you know, when everybody else seems to cower and run the other direction, the intestinal fortitude forces you to f to power through and to overcome, you know. Right. And of course, I mean, even in like this is no surprise, I'm sure to a lot of you, the 
military. There's a lot of like brainwashing going on. I mean, there has to be, you know, right. be, be, because you, you can't throw young men and women 18, 19 years old into heavy fire <laughs> where they could potentially lose their life um, without a degree of, you know, right. making them feel like they're somewhat invincible, you know, right through. I mean, their human nature is like, Danger, danger, I gotta go the other direction. All right. So anyway. Um, so the intestinal fortitude is that courage and that ability, you know, to to fight against the adversity, to say, you know what, I'm gonna stand up uh, for it. I'm going to engage with mental toughness. I'm going to show that I am strong and that I can, you know, uh, overcome whatever this challenge is. Mm -hmm. And that intestinal fortitude like I said, mental toughness or resiliency or um, um, adaptability, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, comes from being able to meet challenges face on, mm -hmm. overcome those challenges, even if they are failures, at changing in a certain way right. so that you can meet that challenge again and succeed or mm -hmm. win the next time. Uh, is crafted through uh, through those, those challenges and through that adversity. So if we're always running for cover, if we're always running to something that is comfortable, you'll be safe, sure, but you're not going to have much intestinal fortitude. Right. It's the ability to, to run into adversity as opposed to run away from adversity. Yes. You know, how many times... Um, at work did you get asked to do a presentation or to some public speaking event or whatever and ah. and most people are like ah, I freak out and they don't want to do it you know it's public speaking is not comfortable for people that don't do it often it's yeah. not comfortable for anybody um, but you just prepare you put it together you practice it and you deliver and when you're done and the three two minutes before it starts are the worst two minutes. Yeah, I know, oh, I know. Because your stomach's going, and yep. it's like, oh, and you're trying to rehearse, and you're trying yeah. not to think about it, and you're trying not to sweat, and you're trying to, <laughs> okay, we'll hold yeah. it together, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm doing all right, and then you deliver, and it's fine. And It's great. And, you know, you kind of even blank out during it. You don't even think about the people out there anymore. You're just worried about delivering yeah. the information. It's like time travel, right? Yeah. You've rehearsed it enough times. You've mm -hmm. written what you're going to say. You've gone over and over in your <laughs> mind. You've rehearsed it in front of the mirror, or you've recorded it and watched yourself back. Or you've shot a, a video and posted it somewhere. You know, these are all techniques that I've used because yeah. I get super nervous. And I've done a lot of public speaking, yeah. and I really enjoy it. And I, I get like a, um, I don't know, um, maybe a hit of dopamine or endorphins released at the end of it. And I feel fantastic. But leading up to it, it I'm like, always feel good. <laughs> I hope they cancel. I, I don't want to do it. <laughs> you know? I, I got a flat tire. I, got, I broke my leg. So <laughs> yeah. I, I fell down the stairs. But yeah. you live in a ranch home. That, yeah. I, but I built stairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be, I'll be like, like deep in thought, and my wife's like, "You, you okay? You know, you, you doing all right? You, what's on your mind?" I'm like, "I'm thinking about this presentation coming up," and she's like, "Isn't that next month?" <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thinking about it. I gotta prepare now. for it. Yeah. I know. I've had a few of those moments. Uh -huh. I took a job, and I moved my family you know, far away, uh, gave up everything, took this job that was uh, on the brink to begin with, and uh, <laughs> this co this company was going into receivership, and I had to, we were like, try to bail it out, see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, I get there, and they say, oh yeah, you have to MC a, um, a fundraising event with a thousand people in two months. And I went, what, excuse me? <laughs> You could have told me this during the interview. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> a thousand people. Yeah, I was oh, 32 shit. years old. <clears throat> and it was a thousand people. And you know what? You prepped, and it went just fine. That was great. No problem. Mm -hmm. But leading up to it. Uh. But because you've crafted some resiliency, yeah, you were able to do it. You were able to bounce back. You were able to meet that stress and the challenge face on yeah. and accomplish it. Just fine. Mm-hmm. And this isn't something that is the resilience, the mental toughness, intestinal fortitude is special to us because we're some magical, great human beings, superhuman. We're not. We're just average people. You can have this too. People, whoever's there with us listening to it or whoever's listening to the podcast, mm -hmm. um, you can have that too. We just need to challenge ourselves. And right. we need to do that on a reoccurring basis. 
for sure. And that's where growth comes from. Growth mm -hmm. comes from overcoming adversity, not running away from it. That's never fun. No. Think about when you're at home and y you are in bed, snuggling with the dogs, with your spouse, watching a movie. You've got some delicious snacks <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the side table. And the temperature is like, you know, 65 degrees. <laughs> You're snuggled in. That's like comfort to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not learning shit. I'm not <laughs> growing. I'm not improving when I'm in that. And now, those moments are great. They're, they're great. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to take that away. I, but I you want You can't those. live in that moment. You can't live in that moment all the yeah. time. Yeah. So if you're feeling stuck right now in your life and you're not growing, it's because in a lot of ways you're probably too comfortable. Challenge yourself. And yeah. challenges start, you know, they, they, they're of all sizes small, medium, large, exceptionally large. Yeah. You know, challenge yourself to something. You know, the hardest thing is people, they want to start, you know, particularly after the new year, I'm going to start, I'm going to start exercising. I got to get back in shape. Mm -hmm. So they get a gym membership. They buy all new workout clothes and they go and they try and they lift like a, a thousand pounds <laughs> on the first day. <laughs> right. And then they're so sore and they're so injured and they're so beat up right. that they're done. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to start a little bit slower and work your way up. Mm -hmm. So how about... I'm going to walk four days this week. Yeah. Just as far as I can or a half hour or 20 minutes or whatever I can. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start there. And then next week, work it up, 25 minutes. And then I'm going to do five days. On the other end of the spectrum, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's not the best way to describe it. There's your uh, terror zone mm -hmm. or crisis zone. When you're in your terror zone, when you're in a crisis, you're also not growing no. nor learning anything. Right. Things are too much. They're too overwhelming. And oftentimes we need to get back to some semblance of comfort or easiness, mm -hmm. some structured environment so that you can, um, you know, build from there. So if you're in your terror zone right now, if you're in crisis mode, we've got to find some way to provide a sense of comfort for you. Right. Yeah, you have to dial back from there, for sure. Yeah. you got to be at a space where you can engage in those things. Yeah. It's not like, okay, well, let's just get back to a challenge area, you know? Like, you, you've got to come all the way full circle back to that comfort and right. finding ways in order to, to feel at least somewhat regulated, somewhat stable. So, mm -hmm. And then once you're there, then we can talk about challenging yourself a little bit. Sure. We worked in patient mental health psych and that was all about finding stability and comfort and sticking to a daily schedule sleep nutrition exercise water that, that type of stuff mm -hmm. in order for them to be able to build off of and of course inpatient they're not able to it's not necessarily a challenging environment it's not necessarily an environment where we're doing some intense therapy it's just stabilizing them and getting them to a comfortable enough place so that they can go back home and with with services, with uh, with resources, with uh, appointments scheduled, so that they can start to um, challenge and themselves and helping them keep them out of their terror zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but how many? To how, I mean, everyone that we saw after three, four, five days of getting some sleep, getting some decent nutrition, getting a little exercise, walking around, keeping hydrated, right, and following yeah. a daily schedule, mm -hmm. everybody felt better with yeah. that, just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And if people would continue with that, that is your baseline. I mean, that's the bare minimum. You do those five things, and then you work up from there. The more intestinal fortitude you have, the more resilience you have, the more mental toughness you have, the better you are able to deal with a crisis situation mm -hmm. and recover quickly and get back to your, your n normal self. I had a recent crisis, um, and I feel like I have a significant amount of intestinal fortitude built up over the years, not just from the military, but just life in general and school and being a therapist and relationships and all that. So I had a recent crisis that I wanted to share briefly. I was woken up 4 a.m., my heart was racing, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. 
I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought, this is it. This is the big one. <laughs> right? So I'm like, coming to join you. My wife's there. My dogs are there. It's 4 a.m. in the morning. I didn't have to get up for another, you know, whatever, um, two hours or hour and a half or something like that. And so, like, I snuggled the dogs. I grabbed my wife. I snuggled her. And, like, I didn't want to wake her up. Didn't want to disturb her. But I thought, all right, this is it. This is where I go, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, I've had a good life up to this point. Anyway, it turns out I, I finally got up, got my wife to work. It wasn't going away. My heart was still racing. Heart rate, 175, right? Crazy. Mm -hmm. Had never experienced that before. I've experienced an elevated heart rate, just, you know, stress or whatever. But this wasn't going away. Despite my, like, woosah, just meditate, just do some deep breathing, you know, uh, I can I can lower this. I don't know if maybe I was dreaming something. I was in REM sleep and like maybe I was trying to deal with a stressor or something. Anyway, it wasn't going away. Nothing for me to be stressed out, stressed about really. So oh, can't get it to go down. Drove my wife to work. Still going. Heart rate. Blood pressure was fine. Mm. My blood pressure is usually like 112 over 64, something wow. like that. Just typically. Blood pressure was fine, just heart rate going bananas. So you come, right, mm -hmm. for the workout. And I put all the workout equipment out. You come, and I'm like, I was even debating whether or not I was going to say anything, right? <laughs> so we had our espresso, mm -hmm. and then we were getting ready to do the workout, you know, doing the chit-chat. And I'm like, my heart just feels weird. And you're like, dude, don't fucking ignore that. And I'm looking, my watch is saying this, and then I'm doing the EKG, and it says I'm in AFib. You're like dude, you need to go to the emergency room. And I was like, I didn't really want to go to the emergency room. I was trying to pretend like, you know, guys, we can be dumb sometimes, right. you know. Like, I'm, sh I'm sure there's a lot of guys that probably die with a surprised look on their faces. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> right. So anyway, so I'm like, all right, I'm trying to uh, not go to the ER, but I'm like, I got a full day of clients, you know. I don't want to have to cancel clients, all right, and make a long story short. Um, finally, um, get to work, and I realize that this isn't going away. I'm going to have to go to the ER. So I was in the AFib, and we have no idea why. Chest x-ray, perfectly fine. Echo, perfectly fine. They don't know why this was happening. They related it to maybe there's some sleep apnea going on. I haven't been sleeping as much as I needed to. I've been probably, for the past month, going on four and a half, five hours worth of sleep. That's my own fault. I mm -hmm. felt like I was superhuman. By the way, I am not. <laughs> and uh, neither are you. <laughs> right. Neither are you. But eventually, um, through with med some medication and just some just rest, even though I didn't get to sleep because nobody sleeps in the hospital. Mm. Uh, after 26 hours of being in AFib, it uh, converted. It resolved itself. Um, they didn't have to do a shock or anything like that. But it was a real fucking wake-up call for me because mm -hmm. sleep is the... The thing that I had not been getting. Everything else in my life, great. You know, my diet's been really good. Water intake's been great. Daily schedule. Exercise is always on point. My, my, my marriage is really is fantastic. Um, dogs are doing really well. There's no stressors. I have a great practice, you know, thriving practice. I get to help people every day. It's a beautiful thing. Nothing for me to be super stressed about. Maybe... There's some sleep apnea going on. I got a sleep study scheduled. I got a cardiologist now. But it was really scary. So it's like, I need to dial things back. I need to not be running on empty all the time. All right. I need to make sure I really take care of myself. Something that I preach to clients, mm -hmm. but I don't, you know, doctor, heal thyself type of thing. We are very good at telling others how they should, the things that they need to do to improve their lives. And yeah. we don't listen to it ourselves. LMAO, well, what's up, Bob? Uh, I'm glad you're better, Tom. Thanks, I really appreciate you. Yeah, so it was I, crazy. I am glad that that resolved, and I'm glad that you had some lessons learned. Yeah. You know, you might as well learn something from adversity instead of uh, ignoring yeah. it. So. But the fact that I have intestinal fortitude that I've crafted and resilience over the years, after experiencing a crisis such as that, where I was panicked, I thought I was dying, I thought that was it, you know? Um, I come back to work, I come back to the daily grind, I come back to exercising, and I feel great. I feel fine. I know what changes I need to make. I've made those changes, and I already feel better. That was two weeks ago, and, like, my life is better than it's been 
You know? I thought it was really good before then, but it's been even better. So that's what crafting intestinal fortitude and mental toughness and resilience can do for you. you it's not that you're going to be immune to crisis. You're going to find yourself in a crisis at some point. You're going to deal with challenging people. You're going to deal with adversity. But if you have enough resilience that you've built up through challenging yourself, through meeting challenges face on, then you'll be able to bounce back. Absolutely. You'll be able to be okay. <laughs> yeah. The teacher learned a lesson. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the lesson is that sleep is not overrated. Sleep is not overrated, man. It's, the be it's like magic. I yeah. love sleep. It's my favorite thing now. When I was young, man, I could sleep in and I could sleep for like 12 hours straight mm -hmm. and feel great. I remember even um, in my early 20s being able to, oh, we got a weekend off, you know, I'm going to sleep in and you like just sleep forever. Right. Now, as I gotten older, you know, at 45, it's like, you know, five and a half hours of sleep was a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. But it's now not, it's not, enough. it's not crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Seven hours. Minimum. We're damn near close to seven hours. Minimum. And that's what I've been getting Good. for the past two weeks, every mm -hmm. night. Sometimes it'll be six hours and 43 minutes. Sometimes it'll be seven hours and 23 minutes. All right. But, man, I feel so much better. I know. There are some uh, evenings where, you know, I'll make dinner, get cleaned up, blah, 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 put something on TV, and I look at my watch, and I'm like, I can't wait to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sleep is one of my favorite things. Yeah. But, um, so I came through that. Nice. Well, I'm glad that you came around the bend, and I'm glad the teacher learned a lesson. Yeah. Um, and it goes back to those basic five, and you were nailing four out of those five. Absolutely. Nailing it. Yeah. But it takes all five. So now I'm taking all five to pound town. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine, even if one of those things goes out. You know, your nutrition goes out the window. We have weekends where we just, the holidays that we just eat a bunch of garbage oh, or yeah. whatever. Yep. And that's okay once in a while. But And you know how you feel after that. I mean, you know, imagine how you felt after Thanksgiving dinner. Ugh. Right. You yeah. Know? So when one of those things, those basic five go out of whack. <coughs> yep. So resilience. Ever since the uh, um, 75 hard challenge, drinking a gallon of water per day, um, uh, occurred, I didn't realize how dehydrated I was running all the time. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that led to headaches, uh, poor sleep, poor circulation, uh, poor digestion, mm -hmm. all those things that just drinking a substantial amount of water, you know, an adequate amount of water per day, all those problems go away. Yeah. <laughs> right? And, and any one of those, uh, you know, instead of just drinking enough water, you could see how people, I know clients do this, they start going to all kinds of doctors and they get all these types of studies, you know, blood work and, and panels and um, x-rays and trying to figure out what's going on when, hey, if you just hydrate yourself, right. maybe things would just resolve themselves uh, on their own. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your body needs water for sure. Yeah. So. And a hydration. Uh, and it was great uh, having a good friend um, such as yourself uh, to, to be there to kind of help uh, pave that way. So connections are very valuable to me. I mean, I value connections with other people. Our connection, the connection I have with my wife and my family, mm -hmm. and the connection I have with clients so much more than any amount of money. Right. Because if you think about having a shit ton of money and then being by yourself, like, what's the point? All right. So I, I, I value uh, the connections and I value maintaining those connections with other people. So mm -hmm. I, would, uh, I would highly encourage you guys, whoever's listening uh, uh, to this, to really um, put forth some energy into the connections you have with others. Absolutely. The people that you love and then that you value. For sure. Anyway. So, what do we have to look forward to this next coming week? I don't know. Other than the... the, the Taco eclipse. Tuesday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't think there's anything coming up that I was... Um, 
Excited Easter's about. over. We got a big eclipse coming on Monday. Yeah. All right. So stay steady through the storm. Put your head up and walk through adversity. Don't run from it. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Yeah. And don't Thank look you guys. Up, don't for... look up at the sky on Monday. Yeah, please, please don't do that. <laughs> you have to have special goggles or something, right? Special glasses to do that, or you got to... What, what did you... What's the homemade version of the... Oh, I don't know. No. I think you could also use your phone and, like, record it and look the other way and just look at your phone. I think that's also doable. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Remember they used to sell those those glasses? The Eclipse glasses? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen those, though. I haven't either. Oh. They'll well, probably be in a, in a Happy Meal, so... <laughs> Tom, it's good to see you. Glad you're doing. You're on the mend and doing better. Thank you. Always a treat to have you, Brad. Thank you. All right. You take we'll care. see you guys soon. All right. Good. I think that was ample enough uh, space to have the uh, background noise where I can edit that. Uh, edit that <laughs> later. Sounds good. I enjoyed that. Yeah. I know we're still live. I'll turn this off. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>